Mayor CNC or Scott here again for CNC Labs. We are back in session with another Basics for Beginners class. This time we are going to talk all about G Sender. Any beginner, it's worth having a look at because certain things that can be very tricky with other software becomes very simple or you just start to understand a little bit better when you start using G Sender. So I want to make sure that you guys are aware of our resources. Uh, I'll put the link in the description below. They are fantastic. We have worked really, really tireless, tirelessly and hard to make sure that they're there for you guys. Obviously we're here too, but check out the resources with G Sender, with any of the long list stuff, because we have worked hard to think them out thoroughly, to help answer those questions, to get you through when you are struggling. Right now, I've got my long mill obviously sitting here. I've got my e-stop engaged, and I do have my USB plugged into my laptop. If you don't have your USB plugged in, then G Sender will not be able to communicate with your machine, and that could be problem number one. I'm not gonna go in depth on anything in here. I'm gonna run through kind of what things are, what they're for, what they're used for, and if you wanna know more, then you get your hands dirty and you test it out. First things first. First, we are going to go up here and you'll see you have a connect to machine drop down. Boink, 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 right there. Mine is obviously connected to COM4, which is the port on my computer it's plugged into. That's all that means. Boom. Clicky connecty and you can see that we are now connected. And if I hover back over it, it will ask me if I want to disconnect. I'm just going to kind of talk about what we see on the screen here so that you know what things are. So this little guy right here is all about remote mode. So you are able to set it up so you don't have to be at your physical computer. Our other main things, we have this big screen here, which is the visualizer. This is basically where you're going to see your G code file loaded up in a visual format. Just so we can see what's going on, we'll go down here to load file. And I'm just gonna grab this one from a Telecaster that we did a little while ago. What your G code, everything you created in your CAD CAM software, what it's going to carve in here. You can use your left mouse button to wiggle around and you can see it will do things like spinning and flipping. You can use your middle mouse button, zooming up, and down and you can use your right to pan around the view those are your kind of custom controls you also have your view wheelie cube over here which you can go from you know top to three quarter in load file you've got this little blue arrow pop out here this will give you your recent files if you hit the x button it will close the current file uh, and that will close your current file it'll still leave the software open but it will close the g code file that is loaded outline is a fantastic function for planning uh, once you have your machine in place your materials all good to go you've got your file loaded you can use the outline function click it will basically go from your zero point wherever that is set and it will give you an outline of the furthermost points of your project so it's going to go around like this to the further most points and back down to your zero it is not going to give you an accurate representation of the path it will use to carve that's very important because you're going to look at it and go why is it doing something different than what it actually carves because this is not what outline does outline gives you the outline of your project file test and run I don't use super often, but it does what it says. It will test your file and run your file to make sure that uh, there's no errors in your G code. And then we have your, obviously your start job. <laughs> Pretty self-explanatory, but this little button right here is super cool. If you click on it, it will give you your start from line options. As you can see, there are 13,800 lines of G code in my file and potentially th th this will come in handy at some point in your carving lifetime, I would almost guarantee it. The biggest example of that for me would be breaking bits. You're carving along, you happen to snap a bit, well, what are you gonna do? Are you gonna start from the very beginning and like after you get your bit reset? No, you're gonna go to start from line. So if you're not sure, there are lots of viewers and options out there to find what line you were on or if you stop your job mid carve, so you break your bit and you hit stop, when you load this up, boop, this will be from the job, or the, from the line that the job stopped at. It'll automatically do it for you. You can start at that point, or you can say, hey, you know, I wanna go hundred lines before and it'll move back just a little bit. From here, that's the visualizer and some of those controls. Down here, we have our G code file that we have open. We have the path where it is, loaded from we have some attributes of our file it's saying you know 14 minutes and there's the inch per minute range our spindle speed dimensions all the things that are going on and then previous files run moving right up to here there is a thing called lightweight mode that is this button right here and lightweight mode basically enables and disables certain things within your visualizer mostly you can see that we get the little spindly guy come here you right it's actually a little bit more accurate of representation. There are extra options for lightweight mode in the settings up here, which we'll get to just next. Location. 
fairly self-explanatory. This is where your X, Y, Z coordinates of your machine translate over into your viewer, into your interface software. If you hit go to, it will go to your zero point for X. If you hit go to Y and Z, and if you hit zero, it will zero X and Y and Z independently, obviously. You also have your coordinates here and mine is telling me it's at zero, zero, zero. You can have the option of really cool stuff of typing in here. You also have the option of zeroing all at once. And your last option in here is go to X, Y, zero. For the newbie just starting out, that is your basic controls. These are going to be your coordinates of where your machine is and how to zero things or how to move your machine around. Jog control is how you manually move your machine around. So obviously you can move it in X and Y, forward and backward or left and right, and your Z up and down. They have pre-programmed in some options for speed movements. That's what these three buttons are here. And you can see when I click on them that the distance moved changes with what they are. So Rapid's gonna move one inch X and Y for every time you click one of the four. And normal is going to go a little bit slower and precise is going to go slower yet. So depending on what you're doing will depend on which of these you are on. A uh, word of advice, pay attention to what you're selected because when you go to zero your machine, if you are on rapid, you are likely going to ram your bit into your wasteboard or your project. I didn't mention, and I should have because I use them religiously, the uh, diagonal buttons. I am all about speed and convenience for those. So why move one direction and then another direction? That's extra clicks when I can just choo, 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 diagonally. And right in the middle of those, you have your stop button. So if for any reason you need to stop what that guy is doing, you hit the stoppy button and it will stop for you. From here, we wiggle down to the bottom right of the screen and you have a probe, macro, console, and coolant tab. For the newbie, you're not touching coolant because you're just not. So we don't even have to worry about that right now. The console is basically just the code version of all the rest of the visualizer and all the rest of the buttons. As a newbie, I'd recommend watching it. It's really cool because you see there are certain values, certain things associated with other things. And if you start to know what those are, it can help you troubleshoot later on. And there is the option to make it larger, which is that guy right there. You can bust it out. Actually, I will say this. The fine folks behind the scenes have asked us if people are having issues with G sender and they have their console open, especially on this bigger view, it's very helpful for them. So if you are having troubles with G sender or your files or anything else, don't forget this tip. Macros, super cool. You can load things to do certain things, you know, turn on relays, all kinds of cool stuff. And last but not least, and the one that I use all the time down here is the probe function. You kind of have three ways of going about probing. When you are setting up to carve a project, you need to tell the interface program and your machine where it's zero point, where it's starting point is. That is what this is all about. That's what probing is all about. Uh, as far as I'm concerned, you kind of have three options. You can just line it up by eye or with a piece of paper and zero. That's your zero point. This is where things get fun. I'm going to call it the old school touch plate. This guy here. There's nothing wrong with her. It serves its purpose absolutely. It allows you to find X, Y, and Z. It allows you to create your zero point from all of them. Nothing wrong with it, just not quite as advanced as the auto zero touch plate. For me, this, this is my recommendation. All right, here we go. For me, it's time and convenience, and that's what this buys you, that the older model or eyeballing does not. It also gives you a certain level of accuracy that is so simple it's amazing. If you're going to be doing a lot of carving, if you are really into this, yeah, it's money well spent. Having said that, that's what the probe function is down here. We can check our Z, our X, Y, and Z, and all the ones. The ones that I use most often are the Z function to find out my height after I've changed bits, and then X, Y, and Z typically when I'm starting a project so that I have my zero point and I know where I'm starting from. I'm actually going to ignore the surfacing one because if you go into the calibrate one, yeah, it's still in there. Surfacing wasteboard here and surfacing wasteboard here will bring you to the exact same spot. Diagnostics obviously are going to give you, some of these things are actually fairly new to G-Sender. This was from the most recent release. Get back over here, you. It's just going to give you some general stuff. What's going on? Do, 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 you know, your machine, your, pro, your, uh, your profile, um, all the things. It's also going to talk about some of your other options in here. That's about all you need to know for now. Surfacing your wasteboard will probably come in handy because after you've got your machine set up and your wasteboard set up, 
you should wait you should surface your waste board because if your waste board's out and you're trying to carve on that it's going to put your carving out so surfacing your waste board it's built in super handy you can set your dimensions you can set all of your parameters xy squaring and movement tuning are all about tightening up the movements of your machine and making sure your machine is indeed square i've used both of them they've both helped fine tune my movements really nicely if you're having some trouble these might be some good spots to start from firmware lots of stuff in here and this is this kind of goes a little bit hand in hand with that console i would say for the most part you don't need to tinker with anything in here with the potential exception and i say potential because it's not all of this your step direction invert so if you are hitting like z down and it's going up this is where you can find all that information if you are indeed looking for it if you are beyond uh newbie and you just want to poke around go ahead we also have the ability to flash our gerbil gerbil whatever you need to do import export settings and restore defaults if you really make a mess aha uh -huh. your profile right at the top we've got a couple other ones in there however we're hoping that if you're using our wonderful software that you're also using our wonderful machines so you can choose your profile in here obviously mark twos and mark ones and all the way down to a couple other ones in there and that's just going to help you set up the size of your machine and things like that if you do need to give feedback, if you want to give feedback, that does not fall on deaf ears. That does go to actual humans behind screens that will take what you have to say into account. Documentation is what I was talking about with the resources right at the beginning. So much helpful information in there. And then the community, again, second to none. It is, is it the reason I bought my long mill? It was one of the contending reasons why I bought my long mill because when you start looking through the boards and the posts and you see how helpful people are and how positive they are, um, I don't know that I've seen any real negative comments towards people from the get-go. People are so nice and so helpful. So if you do have questions for the community, that's where you can hit that. And certainly, last but not least, is my little coggy guy up here. Again, that baud rate is something that most people probably don't have to mess with. Hopefully you don't have to mess with it. Uh, you can have reconnect automatically. You can change your workspace units. You can change your jog presets. You can restore your default sets. We're gonna have all kinds of things from errors and alarms in their codes. You can mess, if you don't have an auto zero touch plate and you just have a standard one, you can change that in here. These settings on the right are going to come in infinitely more important with the standard touch plate than the auto zero because the auto zero just auto zeros spindle and laser if you did buy a laser and you want to turn it on boop that is where you'll do it and when you do that watch down here where i'm focusing my little circle guy boop your spindle laser settings come up so you can go down and mess with those your visualizer this is what i was talking about earlier you can mess around with when you have it turned off it'll be in regular mode or you can have it in lightweight mode which shows again just a few less things you can't mess with the theme or New and shiny button, customizing colors. Shortcuts, same thing. You can mess with these to your heart's content. You can play with, obviously, game pads. This is when you're jogging your machine. You can use the good old mousy mouse. You can set up for keyboard and you can do joysticks. Stats, generic stats, just telling you all the things. These are just some, obviously, kind of information in the background. Tool change. Not playing with them heavily yet, and as a newbie, you probably won't be either, but it's in here. And then the about tells you what version you're running, and there's a list of the previous versions. That's G Sender in a nutshell. It's a little more in depth than just like click here, click there, but now you know what's going on, now you know what they do. And we're just going to do a really quick run through on how to actually zero a piece of material so you know what you're doing. And G Sender will be wrapped up in a nice shell. So Hopefully it's helpful, let's dive over there. So, like I said, gonna show you quick and dirty how to get something zeroed. If you've never done it before, this will be your official go-to. From here, I am going to say, I would like to find my X, my Y, and my Z. If you are using tipped bits, so engraving bits, V bits, you will need to use the tip selection. And if you're using anything else, you can use the auto selection, which is the one right above it. I happen to have a V-bit in my router, so I'm gonna hit tip. I've got my material clamped to my surface. It's square to my machine, we're good to go. You will take, if you are using the auto zero touch plate, your auto zero touch plate, and you are going to just slide it onto the corner of your material. You'll see there's a handy dandy notch out to let you slide it in there. It gives you enough distance to do fairly thin material without any issue. And you can put your banana plug in either of the locations available. 
slide that on there. And this is where I was talking about the speed that you move your jog controls. I usually go normal to get it into position. I use that diagonal button pretty regularly. There we go. So I'm just going to position this over the little square in the bottom of the touch plate, but going downwards, I just prefer to have it low and slow. So I will move it till it gets fairly close to what I need to do. That's fairly close. It's more or less centered on the square in the bottom. Once you hit probe, it is going to ask you for, I call it connectivity, whether or not that's correct, I don't know, but you're gonna take your little magnet. You are going to boop, stick it onto the collet, which is probably good for everybody. I typically tend to hold this touch plate just onto my material so it doesn't slide around because that would give you a less than accurate result. I try and keep my hands out of the way of anything moving though. Keep in mind safety always. And it is going to ask you to touch your, take your touch plate and touch it to your bit that you have in there. And it's just a slight touch. Boop. It will go from red to green. It'll say touch detected. And then you are able to start the probe. Hit start probe. It will go through its cycle. Ta-da! The magic behind it is there are pre-programmed calculations that happen that allow it to figure out where zero is automatically. And it is, again, just a time saver, a convenience, a precision saver. It's now literally touching the corner of my board where zero is, and that's how you would zero up. So if you weren't using the auto zero touch plate, the process would be the same. You'd still throw your other, your standard block touch plate on here. It would still find you your zero. It just wouldn't be quite as fancy dancy and it wouldn't be able to handle V bits either, right? Cause it's got a little to it. That's it for zeroing. Now, if you look over here in G center, you'll see that it has zeroed everything out. The numbers below are less consequential than the ones above. And that's about it for G center and all of its goodness. So class is out as always. Hopefully you found it helpful. Uh, click and subscribe and link and all the things. And we've got a couple more of these coming out that will hopefully be even more helpful for the beginners out there. And uh, we'll see you around the CNC.